Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the replay mod in Minecraft. I am going to assume that you already have it downloaded for this video, but I do have some instructions in the description below. The first thing you're going to need for replay mod is of course a few recordings. And luckily it's very easy. All you have to do is hit escape and you're going to get a new button to start a recording. And you're going to have to click that. This will become an option to pause recordings. And all that does is when you hit it, it will stop recording temporarily. This way it won't make a separate recording, which makes it a bit easier to edit later but you don't have to worry about that right now, so I'm just gonna hit resume. This part's extremely simple, but a few things that you might wanna keep in mind is that everything you wanna see has to be in render distance. It won't render later in the editor. And also, if you wanna get rid of this little indicator here, all you have to do is go into your options, controls, and keybinds. Then if you scroll all the way down, you'll get to your replay mod uh, keybinds. And here, there will be an option to get replay mod settings you're gonna have to bind that to a key. I am using apostrophe. And now when you go out, you can hit this button and you can turn off your recording indicator. There's also some other options here which are useful, but I'm not gonna go into them right now. Whenever you finish recording whatever you need to and you leave the world, this little guy will pop up. Make sure you hit done and don't just quit game or anything because then you'll lose it. Once you hit done, you can come in here to your replay viewer and you can see all of your replays. I have a lot in here, but this is the new one. The newest ones come to the top. I'm gonna rename this one because I like to keep mine organized and you can rename it here. I'm gonna call it Mushroom because that's what I built. In order to see your replays, just double click on them and you can join it like a world. All right, so welcome to the replay editor. It looks like a lot at first, but it really isn't that much. When you get in here, you'll notice that you'll be able to move around almost like you're in spectator mode. You can go through blocks and everything like that. In order to click on anything on the editor though, you need to hit T and that will give you control over your mouse. First off, this top bar here, this is your timeline. This shows you your raw footage that you just recorded. You can click around the timeline to see what's going on and what you were doing at what time. Then you can come over here and you can play your footage in real time. So I can see what I was doing at the seven minute mark. And I was apparently just staring at this mushroom block. Just to the right of that, you can change the speed of your replay. And this doesn't affect anything in your output file. Just make, this just makes it so that you can view your footage faster. Now there's these two buttons. These are your position keyframes and your time keyframes. The position keyframes dictate where you are in the recording in your output file, and the time keyframes choose how fast your recording goes. So in order to actually use the keyframes, the first thing you're going to want to do is choose a spot that you like. I like this spot because I can see generally the whole mushroom. I'm going to go in, hit T to get my mouse, and click the position keyframe. This is going to save the position I'm at at this time on the timeline. So at the beginning, I'm gonna start right here. Then if I wanna move somewhere else later on, I move the playhead to a different time and go to a different position. Then all I do is hit the position keyframe again, and I will be moving in the video between these two keyframes. All right, so now for the time keyframes. The time keyframes work similarly to the position ones, except that they move between time and not position. In order to change what time it is, you use the top timeline up here. And I'm going to go to the beginning because I want to start at the beginning. I'm going to move this playhead to the beginning. And what I'm saying right now is I'm going to start the replay at the beginning. And I'm going to have the beginning time be at the beginning of the video. That sounds weird, but it should make sense. And now let's say I want to stop the replay halfway. So I'd come to the halfway point and place another time keyframe right here. I misplaced it a bit and you can drag them around just by clicking on them and you can also delete them by clicking them when they're red. In order to view your timeline, take your playhead down here and move it to the beginning. Then you can click this one to view a preview of your video. This can be a bit laggy, but it should work on smaller replays. For me though, I do want to show my whole build, so I'm going to get rid of this time keyframe here and I'm going to move my time all the way to the end because I want to show the whole thing. So now I'm going to come in and play this again. And since I'm going faster now, because I didn't change how long on the replay it's going to be, it's going to lag a fair bit. In order to stop some of the lag in your preview, all you have to do is hold shift and hit the button. This will play the timeline without any of the time moving. So you can view your position without having to mess with any of the time down here. This is very useful for the big time lapses because those tend to lag a lot when you play them. So let's say I want to add another position keyframe somewhere in here. One good thing to note is that you can right click on your timeline to move to the position at that time. 
So I can right click somewhere in the middle to move somewhere in the middle of the time. And now I can just move a bit more and set another keyframe here and the position will slightly curve over the course of the, the replay. All right, so when you're happy with what you have, all you have to do is come up here to render your replay. This will look really confusing at first, but all you really need to know is what's right here. This is the name of your file. You can click this and rename it to whatever you want. So I'm gonna rename this to Mushroom. And then there is this. This is your video re resolution, and this is the resolution I generally use for YouTube videos. You can put this to something equivalent and higher, and you'll just get a higher quality video. This is the bitrate. This determines the size of your file. I generally keep it around 80 for good quality, but it can really be anywhere between 60 and 100. And then there's the frame rate. Most people know how frame rate works, but it really just shows how smooth your video is going to be. When you're ready to render your video, just come down here and hit render, and you'll come up with a loading screen. This will take a while, and depending on your computer, it will be slower or faster. You can also hit this button here and it will show you a little preview of your build. I like to keep this unchecked though because it does make it faster for you to render. All right, when it's done, it'll make a ringing sound to let you know that it's finished and it, and it will give you the option to upload it to YouTube and open your folder. So that's pretty much everything you need to know for just a simple time lapse or cinematic, but there are a few more things that could be helpful to help everything run a bit more smoothly. One thing I like to do for my replays is I like to bring my FOV down from my normal playing FOV to a lower setting. This just helps everything to look a bit nicer. This also helps with screenshots also. Another thing you might want to check is that when you're going through your timeline positions to make sure that everything is looking right, you might want to try hitting F1 to remove your GUI. Because right here I'm noticing that this is actually off center and it's positioned a bit too far down. So I'm going to come in here and move this a bit up which is a common mistake that people make because the GUI covers up a lot of your screen. If you're lagging a bit, one thing that you might want to try is hitting Q on your keyboard. This will put you in a loading screen to get into quick mode. And what quick mode does is it basically messes with how everything is rendered in your actual game. It makes it a lot easier to move in between times. So like you can see everything's moving a lot faster and you can also see your replay in real time a lot easier. Things are a bit less accurate for your player and stuff like that, but it, it is very useful if you don't need that much accuracy. So another thing you can do is let's say that you don't want to see my beautiful face. You can hit B and you will enter this menu. You can uncheck this button and I will become invisible. I'm of course the only one here right now because I am, I am a bit lonely, but this is how you can turn off players in your replays. And this does work inside of your render also. Another thing, if you struggle with shaders, is you can turn on your shaders right at the very end. You don't have to build or edit your replay in shaders. You can turn it on right now and hit render and it will show up in your final recording. This is all you need to know to do pretty much most things in replay mod. But if you want to know some more things about this, like how to do some fancy transitions, just ask. I might make another video on this later.